In your experience of research and, and working with people the, over these many decades, is that a good differentiator between this is something I want to do versus this is something I have to do? It's one of the, what I would call, it's a, it's a finger pointing toward Dharma, that, that still small voice that really comes to you, not just once, but usually rather insistently. Um, that's one of the fingers pointing toward this, this idea of Dharma, this idea of sacred calling. But there are others. Um, I would say uh, among those are investigate not only what that still small voice is telling you, but what's, what's obviously lighting you up in your life at the time, at the time, because that energy of experience of being lit up and enthusiastic and fascinated that is a component of dharma and then there there are other more difficult complex components like like the idea of, of duty dharma is sometimes translated as sacred duty and as soon as i bring up the duty it brings up a slightly different color so oh a duty maybe that doesn't exactly light me up but i have to do it i feel called to do it one also has to investigate one's duties one's duties to oneself, the family, society, and, and that's another finger pointing toward Dharma, if you will. Uh, I, By the way, my definition of duty is that thing that if you do not do it, will feel like a self-betrayal. So in, in that definition of duty, duty arises from within. It's not necessarily what's imposed on you from without, but what is that ardent sense of duty that you feel deep within right so i i feel a profound now that i've joined forces with this fantastic institution called kapalu i feel a deep duty to bring everything that i've got to the table to help it thrive now everything that i do in that regard they're not all things that light me up so i've become a a, a kind of a senior pillar there and one of the things i've done in recent years is, is raise money. That's not something that necessarily lights me up, but it's a duty. It goes along with everything else that I, that I do there. I get to write and teach and, but I also have some administrative things that I, that I have to do from time to time. So duty is, is got a slightly different color than lit up, right? Um, and the, the third finger pointing at Dharma that I'd point your listeners to is, is what I would call difficulty. So very often difficulty or let's say illness or relationship problems, family problems, financial problems, very often difficulties are also fingers pointing at Dharma. Um, I, I wrote a chapter in my last book on Dharma called When Difficulties Arise, Take the Measure Dharma. So it's possible that an illness arises and you say, okay, I'm going to organize my life around healing from this illness. This is my calling now. This is what I'm called to do. Uh, and I, I wrote a chapter about the brilliant uh, teacher, Marion Woodman, whom I taught with for years, who developed bone cancer. And she was one of the great, she was the great feminist Jungian analyst of the 20th century. And when that happened, she said, this is my calling. My calling is to heal from bone cancer. Her doctor said, no way, ain't going to happen. She said, okay, I'm surrendering. I'm closing my practice. I'm bringing everything I've got to this process of healing. And she healed. And she taught again for another 10 years. That's another finger pointing at Dharma, difficulty. So I would say, what lights you up? what duties call to you from deep inside and what difficulties might be fingers pointing at dharma for you 